Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? live stream when he was in Indianapolis on Tuesday. Hi, Cutlets. I watched Matt's live stream when he was in Indianapolis on Tuesday, and I laughed so hard when he harassed the demonstrators that I almost peed myself. <laughs> Matt is hilarious. Plus, he is so, so cute. Jody doesn't know what a treasure she has. He goes out there all by himself against all those protesters while she stays home with her quote-unquote bad back. The things he does for that woman, he has worked hard to support her and her shopping addiction for years. As a craft artist myself, let me tell you that those unpainted wood walls and peeling paint combined with early American stuffies and all that other fake colonial junk is not a good look. Oh my goodness. What is she thinking? Matt also took her side against their son when Jody was being a great big bee. And now he's estranged from his only son and sweet little grandson. It makes me so sad for Matt, but he's loyal. God bless him. I don't understand why. What does he get in return? A wife who spends her time mooning over Oreo. Oreo, who looks like a little gnome and has a really annoying voice. Not like Matt's. I could listen to Matt for hours, especially when he's being so witty with what he says about the protesters. <laughs> I'll never forget how he got on the bullhorn and dominated Ant at Bunker Hill. Oh my gosh, I wish I had a man like that. I said in chat that they should come to D.C. and join us at hashtag Freedom Corner, and I meant it. If Jody's back hurts too much for her to come, it's her loss. We all know that she would rather drink Josh wine and eat Oreo cookies than come out for freedom. Even at Bunker Hill, she was such a diva in her special tent. Stormy had to move a bunch of other tents just so she could have the spot she wanted. He's another man who isn't appreciated like he should be. Love you, Roger. But if Matt comes to D.C. by himself, we could talk. For one thing, I worked in the medical field. Well, I did clerical work, but I learned a lot. So many people use back pain as a scam to get workers' compensation. When I explain it to Matt, he'll see how Jody is pulling the wool over his eyes can't work because of her back my ass pardon my french matt needs a woman who understands him i know that when we spend some time together he'll see that i have more to offer than she does and i'm not like her lusting after another man i'm a good christian woman these days and i know matt is a good christian man but i learned a few things back when i was young and wild and i could show him a good time <laughs> oh matt just give beef a chance that's all for now, Cutlets. Email me if you want to buy some macaroni jewelry. More humble hearts coming soon if I don't cut off my hand with my dad's tools. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Glory be to beef. Oh, whoops, I had myself muted. Um, yeah, so the beef is talking big shit about um, Jalen. So spicy. So I just bet however long that video was, five minutes, three minutes, just giggling to myself and you guys couldn't even hear me. But hello, hello, hello. Um, so I'm going to turn the camera on and I don't have, it's probably really echoey in here. This room is like super empty, but it has the best lighting. Um, and I had the green screen up and I don't know, it's, it's, I'm sure it's user error, but it still looked weird. So I don't have it on. So what you're going to see is an empty shelf, but I put, I put like two things on it. So for, you know, the visual. Okay. See? So it's very echoey in here. This room is very empty, but the lights in this place freaking suck. So I guess we can't have it all yet, eventually. And now it's doing a focusy thing. I also need to figure out how to mess with that because it gets really blurry doing the focus shit. 
Hmm. Let's see. Camera. I turn this. Uh... Ugh, I hate that angle. Whatever. Talk Tifa. Is it still lit? No, of course it's not. Well, of course it's not. So anyway, um, welcome to AP's stupid little notebook. Coming to you live from not a storage unit and not my mom's shed. I'm smoking some reefer. You know, it's really funny. So... I mean, it's not really funny. It's like dumb and like literally nobody cares, but I always say, you know, it's really funny. Um, so Jericho smokes weed. Like I've seen him do it. Okay. He does it at Freedom Corner, which I mean, technically is probably not legal. Um, there's like this with private property type thing. So if it was private property, it could be legal. Ooh, ooh, I gotta figure this blurry thing out. That's annoying. Anywho, so um, there's like some like psychopaths that are like on Twitter that are like, oh my god, like Tifa, like Tifa grows weed or grew weed or smoked weed or whatever problem we have today. Anyway, he should go to jail. That's a crime. He's he's all of these terrible things because of weed, which is actually legal in Virginia and DC. But anyway, it's fine if Jericho smokes weed. It's fine. Thanks, Sandfleet. All right, I'm gonna try to move through this a little faster today. So um I'll just, this this was later in the day, but I'm just gonna get this part out of the way. Jake Lang was supposed to have a status conference today that I guess it just never happened. Um, it it was Judge Nichols, um, and the doors were locked, and there was nothing going on in there. No thing on the door, you know, the docket. Nobody was in there. Um, so I don't know what happened to Jake Lang today, but if you do find out, let me know. Um, but the news of the day is, oh, and I'm going to tell you how to say your name because I wrote it so that I would say it correctly. It's, I did go back and skim through my chat of my live stream last night. And I saw, remember when I was struggling with Rebecca, not Rebecca Freedom Corner, but the granny lady's name, you guys are all helping me. And I didn't see it until I went back and watched it, but you were saying, um, like Laverne, except with the Z, Laverne's, it's actually not it. Because I listened to her daughter say her name and her attorneys and everybody else. You would think it would be that. So it's actually La Ren, Varen's. Like it's instead of, it's spelled V E R N Z, but they're saying it like L A hyphen V R E N Z. La Vrenz, Miss La Vrenz. So. Anyway, she's bougie like that. Um, so yeah, we went through her stuff yesterday. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you missed that. And you can sit here and listen to this if you want. But if you really want to know what I'm talking about, go back and watch my stream from last night. So she had she wore an outfit like I would wear today. Mind you, I have a sweater on. And I also wore jeans, but anywho, she had like a, like this little black dress on that had like a belt and, um, it was like a strapless, it was like a halter top thing. Um, but she had this like sweater shawl type thing over it, um, in these red heels. Again, I don't, I, I don't wear heels. I'm wearing a sweater and now I have leggings on and Batman socks. But anyway, what my point being, she's, it was very, um, it was a young outfit for a woman of her age. Uh, you know what? Hang on. I might be able to show you a little bit. Do, do, do. You have the time. 
to listen to me whine. Okay, there's that. Pull that up. Damn, why can't I? I can show it, but I'll not show a little freaking. Well, so I only have it in the computer on Discord, and I'm not going to accidentally show you the Discord because I'm not an idiot. But when I make the video full screen, I can't go back to the other tab where the stream yard is to turn screen sharing on and I won't turn it on and accidentally show my discord because freaking there's like three grannies that are like crazy but anyway she doesn't dress like an old granny maybe that's my point so again let's let's try to work this daughter situation because she's got a bunch of them at least three of them so um, one of her daughters worked somehow with the Trump campaign. And last night, what I said was that one of her daughters was going to be testifying and the daughter had to stay in the hall. Um, and that one of her daughters worked for Trump. So like, I thought that she worked for Trump, the one that was supposed to testify. So she testified today. And there's no way she worked for Trump. Like, So I'll just describe the characters, sisters. I'm just going to describe everybody before I really get into this. Like, I don't learn all of this until throughout the whole day. And I start putting pieces together. But um, remember yesterday when I was talking about the sisters? Yeah, I just put it on Twitter. So there, there's a one, I call her a redhead, but it's actually like strawberry blonde. Uh, she's been there consistently every day. And then there's one that is a curly blonde uh, that's been out in the hall because she's going to be a witness. She was a witness today, but prior to this, she was going to be a witness, so she can't be in. And there was some drama yesterday, like the sisters might be passing notes or text messages or something, and like the marshals came in and were checking everybody's phones and stuff. So, um, also yesterday, another, what I presume to be sister, because she was, you know, like, very touchy with the other girls and the mom and everything. So I'm, I'm assuming they're sisters. So anyway, she had showed up yesterday and she was very pretty. She was the most put together one of all of them. And she was the one that was like sitting like this so that her head was kind of like looking at me. She kept looking at me a lot. She looked at me at the hall. So if I had to take a guess on the three sisters, the redhead, the one with the curly blonde that testified and then the long blonde that's pretty. I would say the long blonde pretty one is Trump because I learned today that one of the sisters lives in D.C. Um, so that's where Grandma um, Lavrens, Rebecca Lavrens, stayed uh, for January 6th. She stayed with her daughter because her daughter lives in D.C. So I'm assuming because that one was only there for a short time. <clears throat> I haven't seen her since that she actually has a job or whatever. Um, so that's what she's doing. So the curly haired one um, <clears throat> testified today and she's, she, I don't know how old she is. She actually didn't say, but I wouldn't, I would put her rough around the edges somewhere <clears throat> around 40 to 45. Um, she was like the lawn boy of the sisters. So she's lived with her mom her whole life. Um, and her job, her job was like the errand boy, basically. Like, so, um, La, La Vrenz has an Airbnb. Um, so this sister, uh, I'll get to her name eventually, but um, anyway, this sister like checks the guests in. She makes the food at the Airbnb. She Airbnb. She cleans there. She also cleans other houses. She mows like five freaking acres at this Airbnb. Plus, she mows other yards. She um, 
like I said, cleans houses, organizes. She does all this like random shit. That is her job. And she's lived with her mom her whole life. Sorry about this focus. Um, and um, some other things I observed about her after she testified, um, I was sitting behind her and she probably at least has had, if not does have a drug problem just based on, you know, what I was observing about her appearance and just the way she was acting. Um, and she was super touchy feely with the redhead sister, um, like really hanging on her. That's weird. Um, okay. So that's her character. And the redhead sister um, goes in and out a lot in and out of the courtroom. Um, and she's writing a lot, even when like literally nothing is happening, she's just writing and writing and writing and writing. So I don't know what's up with that one. Um, all right. So as I walk in, I got there, uh, as they were coming back from lunch. Okay. So they were, the judge was denying, um, the defense's motion for acquittal. I mean, duh. Like if this doesn't stop doing this autofocus. So let's see. I'm gonna take this, touch up my appearance, and I'm gonna look ugly. Watch, ready? Let's see what happens now. Now it's really shadowy, but also still doing the blurry thing. And bam. Oh, that's too much. And hello, everyone. Welcome, 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 welcome. So they filed, you know, for an acquittal and that was denied. So whatever, apparently they had mentioned another case. Um, and I wasn't there for that. So Roger Rue had said that this person that they were talking about, like, must be a, an informant, like a Fed or something, because they were, like, severely under-prosecuted. Apparently, that's what he said whenever he brought this argument up, whether it was earlier today or sometime during the week. Um, anyway, he fact-checked himself, or maybe someone informed him that it was actually the opposite of that. So Roger Rue wanted to personally apologize to that person. Um, he listed that person that was in that case. I don't think it was even a J6 case. I think he was just like citing like case law or something. Um, anyway, that person that he thought was like an informant and was under prosecuted and like got away with it actually was overly, and he said brutally prosecuted. So he was very, very sorry he got that wrong. So good on Roger Rue for correcting himself. The camera's not reversed. I like it this way. I don't, it's mirrored. I don't like it the other way. It makes my face look weirder than it already is. Um, so, <clears throat> so, um, they had, uh, looked up another case too and um the judge was talking about this one and it, it was just like a brief mention or whatever but he said he said the person's name and blah 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 and then ship not shipley excuse me john pierce grifting johnny was like him and him and titty toilet curl i gotta come up with a better name for her um we're like like talking amongst each other um and so freaking Johnny interrupts. He interrupts the judge a lot, which is wild. Um, and he was like, I'm just confused because um, I think the name was like Bios or Bias, B-I-A-S or B-I-O-S. Um, apparently that person is their client also. So they were like, wait, I don't understand how, you know, that's, that's on whatever, whatever. I don't know if it's case law. I'm not exactly sure what, what the, all that is. I'm not, I'm not that smart yet. So anyway, um, he's like, I don't understand because such a, that person hasn't even been to trial yet. And, um, he's, 
and the government interrupts and they're like, they said something about like a status conference prior to trial or whatever. So the defense is all like confused because they're like convinced like the government and the judge are wrong because that's their client and their client hasn't been to trial yet. And friggin' Johnny's like, um, something about 90, it's just funny that 90% of the cases that are being mentioned are our cases. So him and Roger Root are a team, right? So like all these case laws and things that are getting cited, um, most of them are their clients. So they should be familiar with it, but you know, somehow they aren't. And so the judge was like, um, well, I don't think Western, is it Western law or West law, whatever system they use that has all that in there. Judge was like, I don't think Western law, uh, or he's like, I don't think there's deep fakes on Western law. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I just, I don't know how I can possibly tell you the only focus, focus, focus. There's a lot of traffic going on. The only attorney that I witnessed that's worse than um, John Pierce is Roger Rue and their team. So it's so bad. So anyway, we move on from that in the West Law. Thank you. Thank you. You only acknowledge Mary Todd Law. So the first witness is this woman named Vicki Tompkins. And these are character witnesses, excuse me, character witnesses for the defense for Rebecca Lavrens, 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 there it is, Lavrens, Rebecca Lavrens. Um, you'll have to go back and watch it later, Abe. I'm going to put this joint down. I really obviously don't need it. I'll smoke it later. That was a $15 pre roll I got before I went to court today. Um, and it was just like so much. And this is like my fourth time smoking it. And it's great. Roger Rabbit is a bad attorney too. Roger Rabbit is the, is the movie with the, yeah, with the girl with the red hair, right? That's Roger Rabbit who framed Roger Rabbit. That used to be my favorite movie. I'm also going to show these windows. Ooh, I'm going to for more. Okay. So classic. Hey, boss money. Um, so the first witness is this woman, Vicki Tompkins, character witness, character witness. And she is from Colorado Springs, which is where I'm just gonna call her Rebecca. It's still too much. Where Rebecca is from. Um she has a master's in education. She had a bachelor's in something. I didn't write it down, but it was like organization. She teaches, she got a bachelor in teaching people how to organize or something like that. Um, so she is a guardian at litem social worker. Let me say that again. She is a guardian at litem social worker. And she also works for the El Paso GOP. She's also black. So she is good friends with Rebecca and has been for four years. And she met Rebecca because her husband, Vicky's husband, held a prayer event and Rebecca attended that prayer event. And they've just been besties ever since then. Um, she is the kindest, gentlest person she's ever met. She's always peaceful. She's never said a bad thing about anyone. She's never, whatever, cross hair, whatever, whatever Southern type shit she's saying about this woman is like so nice. Okay. Um, and she's never raised her voice. 
Okay, so that's what she's telling Roger Root, right? So now the government gets up there um, and they ask, you haven't watched any of this trial, right? She says, no. They say, you weren't with her at J6? She says, no. No further questions. <laughs> um, so the next witness is Richard Green. Danny, read the room or you're going to get blocked forever. I went through the trouble to unblock you to just let you be here because it's just very interesting. Um, Taylor has court and stuff, so, you know, you're here. So just, like, calm down. Anyway, Richard Green um, is from Austin, Texas. And he, hold on, let me make sure I tell you, right, I'm going to make sure it's the right guy. <clears throat> yes, it is. Okay, so he is the guy, yesterday I talked about how um, there's like a, a YouTube live stream, and it's like some chud, and he's like doing like a, like this, it's like stream yards, and it's him, and Rebecca's on her little screen, and she's talking about J6, and she incriminates the fuck out of herself, she talks about the barriers, she talks about, you know, all the chaos, people knocking shit down, and all of that, um, it was stuff that the, the defense didn't want to show yesterday, but it got overruled and it was shown. Um, so anyway, that that's the tavern. That's what that was called. That was that, I guess that's his show or that was that episode. I don't know. Um, someone will look it up really soon. So Richard Green from Austin, Texas. So he has a nonpartisan, nonprofit um thing where he teaches people about the constitution and how to be good citizens and how to testify in court and how to speak with your representatives and lots of lots of um other civic things okay teaches you how to be a to do your civic duty as an american citizen and it's it's not it's not just Republicans, it's um, you know, it is nonpartisan, so that means all inclusive, basically. Yes, right. Um, so Democrats, libertarians, um, I don't think he said socialist, but he said everything else. Okay, so he, um, he, oh, yeah, he, he teaches people, um, you know, because we the people, it's our job to like keep this country safe. So he is a former, I believe, Texas state representative, and he's also an attorney, which is mind boggling after just everything. Okay. So he has this little nonpartisan, not profit constitutional civic class thing. Oh my God, just time him out. You're gonna get a little, you're gonna sit in the timeout corner, Danny Wayne. I don't know what you're doing. Um, he his little not profit thing. I don't even know. He um, teaches other people how to be constitution coaches. So what he does is he comes to um, your home and teaches you how to set up um in your home so you can have your neighbors come over and you can teach them all of these civic duties um and you could you know use the interwebs if you if you would like oh my god focus that's fine one day we'll get it um so yeah that, that's called hosting you're hosting it right so rebecca is a constitution Constitution coach who hosts const whatever it's called to teach other people how to be constitution coaches, right? Um, and he's started all of that and he teaches everyone how to do that. Um, so let's see. He says like some political shit. 
Um, and the government objects. Wait, is this still the defense talk? Oh, this is the defense talk. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So, yeah, he's he's telling this to Roger Root. Oh, there's 28,000 Constitution coaches involved in this program. Okay. For the record. Um, so, yeah, he teaches people how to host, how to blah, blah, blah. So, he says something... Roger Root asked a stupid question. He asked a lot of stupid questions. I eventually stopped writing them down. Like, he's a complete fucking idiot. So the government objects, okay? And so when there's an objection, they do the static white noise. <laughs> Yesterday when I did that, I, when I went back and watched my stream, God damn it, focus. Um, maybe I just have to stop moving. You, When I make this noise, can you hear that? Can you hear the fake static noise I'm making? Because you couldn't yesterday. Because I have like settings on my microphone, but I didn't use that microphone today. So can you hear when I do that? Anywho, that's what happens. And they all get on their little phone things and they they talk, whatever, the judge and the, and all that. You can hear it? Okay. So um, the judge and all the attorneys have this sidebar conversation. Um, so when they finish that, they excuse the jury. <laughs> so just like they're in, you know, they're interviewing the whatever you call it. I don't think interview is the word, but you know, they're the Roger Rue is questioning um Richard Green and Roger says a stupid thing and the government objects. And so when they come back, now they've decided we have to excuse the jury because we have to have this whole freaking conversation about stupid Roger Root type stupid questions and shit. Um so turns out because the government is so efficient and they just in real time figure things out okay because root and pierce are trying to be slick and just like they think they can like drop bombs and the government is i mean like they're like like the freaking prosecutors are talking and also watching footage other footage at the same time okay because they're like like as the defense is like throwing out random shit these guys are like actually actually <laughs> actually so turns out this this richard green who is supposed to be a um character witness focus for rebecca didn't know Rebecca prior to January 6th. So like the whole point is to set up like, oh, she's such a good person. She would never do that, right? She wouldn't harm a flea. We didn't know her until after she insurrected the Capitol. So now after all this back and forth between the judge and Roger and like, like this is what you have to ask like you can't you can't ask um you know like he doesn't know anything blah 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 that's not what they were saying okay but that's my idiot way of explaining it so basically uh the judge was like i don't see any relevant reason to have this witness here he didn't know her prior to january 6 like what what is it that you want out of this witness mr root um and he, Root's argument was going to be that um, she watches his live stream because he does a live stream. <laughs> and um, so maybe, oh, and they didn't actually know each other. Like that interview that they did that, you know, incriminated her, they had never met prior to this. She went to J6 and she was like a fangirl already for a couple years or whatever watching him and she's in the chat so she must have a youtube chat that's that that's must be why everybody why her and her daughters knew me because they're boomers on youtube so um anywho she's been watching his live stream for a while and she didn't do this interview until after j6 right so he wasn't familiar with her at all okay because they do ask him like like did you meet her? You know, did you know her? Blah, blah. He meets her after, like he goes to Colorado and does this, teaches her how to do constitution classes, but again, after J6. So, um, did you have any contact with her? And he was like, no, like maybe she was in the chat, but you know, I don't know. Um, so anyway, 
the Roger's argument was going to be um, that, how did he say it? And I'm going to find my notes. Roger was like, I think he has a relevant testimony. Um, and the judge had said, what do you anticipate he's going to speak to? What is his testimony going to be? And Roger's like, um, you know, the constitution classes and this civics thing. Um, these are all good citizens and basically like no bad person that is involved in this, in this group, um, would do these bad things at the Capitol. Um, and even though he didn't actually like know her or meet her and he doesn't know if she was in the chat, um, this constitution class thing, because prior to him coming and actually meeting her and teaching her how to do it, you can like sign up. That's why there's 28,000 constitution. Oh, Mickey and Nicole, 28,000 constitution coaches so before they actually met in person she was involved in the, the the pyramid scheme or whatever she was signed up on it so because she was signed up on it in in a roundabout way he knew her richard green knew her that's like if one of you got in trouble and i never reply never acknowledged your existence in chat and i have no idea what your username is or anything um and you did something wrong and i was a witness it makes absolutely no fucking sense anyway carry on um You know, these were law-abiding citizens because they they were being taught to go speak to their lawmakers. So they wouldn't be lawbreakers if they were going to speak to lawmakers, right? Make it make sense. And at this point, um, I wrote worst lawyers ever. Um, so they... The judge says color of law. Was it the judge said the color of law? I think it was a judge mentioned color of law. I have my little thing. I could look it up right now. But if somebody could tell me what that is about, um, and something about it would have to be a government official, not a teacher. So I think to have like a roundabout character witness, it would have to be a government official, not a teacher. But then again, he wasn't a teacher. I don't know. I'll figure that out later. Um, so the government says that Richard Green has nothing to offer. The judge says there's no, he has no foundation. This witness has zero foundation. Um, you know, it's entirely speculation. Um, so the judge says the larger issue is that um, he has knowledge of civil work. And I don't know if that's relevant unless you want to suggest he coerced her into going to the Capitol. So the judge was saying, like, this guy is not going to help you. Like, if he actually, like, is a professional civic guy and he told you or helped you in any way about this, like, that could be more problems. Most civics, more problems, basically, right? This is the ratchet version of D.C. federal court, okay? Just so you know. Um, so Roger's like still trying to talk about some like online classes that she participated in. Um, why are you talking about that gross person? Yeah, what am I missing? Not that I care, but okay. Anyway, there's like no factual predecept to this, whatever. I don't know what that word means exactly. Um, Anything, you know, after J6 is just simply not relevant. What do you want him to talk about from the podcast, though, Mr. Root? Um, Root says, Roger, Root, I use, I use Roger and Root interchangeably. So Root says, um, he is the only person who got her statement after J6, because that was like the media interview that she did was his little tavern podcast and she incriminated herself. She said, she said what she did. 
Um, and the judge said, this is quite the thicket you're trying to get us into, Mr. Root. Um, and he's like, I'm aware that was probably the point of this because that is your job after all. Um, so yesterday I told you about um, how there was going, the government was trying to bring a rebuttal witness, okay? And they were doing it because Roger Maru had said that an officer ushered people in. He did this hand gesture to usher him in. And like, surprise, after Roger said that, that gave the government the right to bring that witness in to rebut because that witness, you know, did not usher those people in. And also that same person that they're saying ushered people in had already testified to Root and Pierce that he did not usher people in. In another case, he already testified about it. I'm so sorry, this is blurry. I should just not move, but it's hard for me. Um, so they got that witness. So that was a cop. Um, and I'm just going to leave his name out. Um, I'm sure it ends up like in court documents, but I don't know. So I'm just going to leave that one out. But um, anyway, so they had that officer testifying all morning. Maybe this is the Interesting. Oh. No, still doing it. A mute? Am I mute? What are you talking about? Really? Okay, it's you, girl, or person. Excuse me. So, um, they bring that witness in. And so that happened all morning. So I missed that, but that took all of the morning. So that witness had just finished testifying um, and then they went to lunch. And then I arrived as they were coming back, just coming back from lunch. Um, so that officer was like, once again, like I already told you, I did not do that. So... Roger and John, Drifting Johnny, surprise, throw in some footage that's never been seen before by the government, okay? This is unreleased footage or whatever. And this officer that's testifying is the sergeant, I guess, of this team here, This that's right here in this area or whatever, at least. Um, so he's back and forth around the whole group, okay? So... He did not do this usher hand thing, but this footage that um, Grifton, Johnny, and Roger are showing is of another officer that's part of that team. And allegedly that officer is saying, um, yeah, you guys, or something, someone, at, one of the rioters asks to come up the steps and this cop is like, this is a separate cop. This cop is like, um, something like i have to ask my boss like maybe or whatever so roger's trying to be like yeah this officer just like was letting them in or whatever and the officer who was testifying was like that wasn't me i didn't do that i didn't see that i didn't hear that i have no knowledge of that i don't know okay um <laughs> so Roger was like trying to impeach the witness and shit. It was just a bunch of dumb shit. I wasn't there for that shit, so I can't give you the exact on it, but I got, you know, I I ask around. <laughs> I'm nosy, okay? So that's why I'm very nice to everyone, so I can be nosy. Um, so again, it backfired for Roger. So now, the surprise footage that they showed today of this other officer saying like let me ask my boss if he can come in um the government just subpoenaed that officer and another officer to come in and to testify about their version of this of this evidence that roger root is saying they were like yeah you can come in so 
we still have to have that officer and the other officer, so two more Capitol Police officers testify, and they literally just sent over a subpoena in the middle of court to have them come be witnesses. So um, that won't be until at least tomorrow because I was I was there until they closed down shop today. One day I'll get this and it won't be a problem. Turn up the lights in here, burn or burn me. Not extra bright, but I do want you to see. Mm. 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 It's not. It's not completely take this off. Okay, so yeah. So one officer that they just called up yesterday testified today to rebut Roger Root. And then Roger Root again said some dumb shit. So now they're bringing in two more officers to fact check Roger Root. My audio is screwed. It's always screwed every time. I'm, I already explained at the beginning of this, those problems. So... The jury is still out at this time, right? Okay, like what, there's like all of this drama happening, right? So anyway, we bring back um, the jury so that Richard Green can finish testifying, okay? So they turn everything on, right? Here we go, lights, camera, action, everything that happened, the jury didn't see any of all of this drama, right? Okay, so... Now, Roger Root has to start all over again. The judge tells the jury, you know, everything he just said is, is I'm striking it. So you have to remove all of that information because it does not exist anymore. Um, so we're completely starting over again with questions for Mr. Um, Richard Green. So everything I told you about Richard Green is just completely off record. Didn't happen anymore. It's Struck down. Um, so, and take two. So, um, Mr. Green, is this you in the photo? Yes. Is this your podcast, your show, something? Yes. No further questions, sir. That's it? Yes. <laughs> And then Richard Green leaves. And so there was a lot of staticky, the staticky sidebar thing happening. And Richard kept like, don't try to be funny and like make funny jokes when you're on the witness stand. It's awkward. So he had mentioned a bunch of times loudly that the static, um, you know, I don't know how you people stay awake with this static. This is what I use to fall asleep to. He had said when he was up on the stand. So after he, you know, just said, um, yes, that's me in the photo. Yes, that's my podcast. Um, he gets off and as he's walking away, he's like, at least you didn't play the static anymore. And I'm just like, oh my God. So that was, he came all the way from Austin, Texas to give, um, yes, that's me in the photo. And yes, that's my podcast. So time well spent. Um, Next. So the next witness is Jennifer Lavarens. 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 Jennifer Lavarens, Rebecca's daughter. Okay. So that's the one I filled you in pre. I gave you a, a, a prequel to Jennifer. Okay. I couldn't recall her name earlier. The curly blonde. Okay. That is definitely not on Trump's campaign. Okay. It must have been the other blonde sister again. But go back if you want to hear that if you missed it. Um, so they bring her up, um, and they, they ask every witness, you know, your name, um, your education level, where you, where you're from. So they ask her, her education level. And she says, I have a high school degree. And then he asked the next question, but a high school degree. Okay. And so they ask her what she does for a living. Um, well, first I asked, you know, how do you know Rebecca? And she's like, that's my mom. Um, so she, um, her, 
Yeah, so what she does for a living, and she's like, well, it's it's a hard title, which I get. That's from when people ask me what I do, I'm like, well, but anyway, that's when she lists it all off. Like I briefly filled you in on earlier. She does help support. She organizes. Oh, I left a lot of stuff out. I got now. I remember the hoarder stuff. Um, help support. She organizes. She does administrative work. Administrative work. She fills in the gap for what they need. Um, and hopefully, she's she never like said like clients or like a company or I do this myself. She just was there. She he was like, what do you do? And she's like, well, it's a hard title. I do help support, organize. Well, she starts listing the shit. So it kind of really didn't make any sense when she said she fills in the gap for what they need done. Um, and that's when Roger was like, you know, like you mean clients. And she's like, yeah, clients. Um, and then she talks about how she, she de hoards people. <laughs> so I know what she meant. Like, she comes and cleans and organizes hoarders' houses, but um, she kept saying she dehoards people, and you know she not only like cleans and organizes, but she like helps them work through it, like work through their problems. And she was saying it like I'm saying it, so like just really not well at all. Okay. Um, And then Roger asks her to describe what dehoarding is. And she goes, well, dehoarding is when someone um, has a lot of stuff and they keep it for a lot of years. And she was describing hoarding, not dehoarding. Anyway, a lot of stupid waste of time. Um, and then she, she lets us know that her mom is also one of her clients and she does travel out of state to work for other clients, mowing yards and de-hoarding stuff. Okay. Not that I would knock anybody for doing it, but just this woman, as I put all the pieces together, and I explained most of it earlier, and she's my age. Okay. So when they ask her, her residence, she says that she's lived with her mom. She said for a brief time, she lived in Kentucky, but she's lived with her mom for her whole life. Okay. And then she goes on to describe her mom, but she doesn't describe her as her mom. She describes her literally as her best friend friend okay and like they're all they have they're so bonded and they're so close and you know just ugh, great they're all touchy touchy um and when she's describing her mom's character about how she would never break the law she said that she knows her mom would not never, never break the law because she would never jeopardize our friendship she has never broken laws. She's law abiding. And I found that really weird that she said her mom wouldn't break the law because she would never jeopardize her friendship with her daughter. So this is, there's like some mommy issues going on here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So all those things I listed above that um, Jennifer does for her mom. So she was informed that her mom was going to January 6th, like a day or two prior to January 6th. Um, because, again, her mom has an Airbnb and jennifer takes care of it so her brother there's a brother i never saw the brother in all of this i've seen at least three sisters but the brother had texted jennifer and was like yo mom's like going to dc not like that like they were like mom's going to dc for a prayer allegedly i never actually saw the messages but anyway and like can you take care of the airbnb so Roger wanted her to describe in preparation what she did. And I was under the assumption she was going to talk about what she had to prepare for the Airbnb and stuff. But no, what she told us was how she didn't have to pack a lunch for her mom that day because her mom was fasting. And she was like, I, did, I, didn't, even, I didn't even know she was fasting. It was like a couple days she was fasting. So she packs her mom's lunch like on the regular. Uh, um, and she was talking about how she was packing her clothes and her mom's suitcase and her luggage, um, and that she didn't have to arrange any travel itinerary because her mom was driving, um, and her sister lived in DC. So she didn't find out until the day before that her mom was driving from Colorado to DC by herself, elderly. You can't even drive from Colorado to D.C. in one day, I don't think. Anyway, um, so.
So yeah, she didn't have to pack the lunch because her mom was fasting. So she packed her suitcase. She's going to stay with her sister. Um, and also because their dad, I think she said he died. I can't remember what she said about her dad, but anyway, her dad wasn't in the picture. And so she was the one that takes care of the car maintenance, like the oil change and the gas and those type of things. So she made sure her mom's car was good to go before she went. Um, and so that's when Roger Root asked, did, did you pack her any tactical gear? And then the government objects. Okay, so then we do the little sturkey thing. Or no, it wasn't Roger Root. Excuse the fuck me. Hold, hold the phone. The person that was interviewing um, was, interviewing is not the right word, that was questioning Jennifer was John Pierce. John Pierce was up now. It was his turn. Um, so John Pierce is the one who said, did you pack any tactical gear? And that's when the government object. And so they go to the static to go to the phone. So John walks away. Pierce walks away. That's his name. Pierce, I'll call him. Walks away to go to his phone thing. And as he walks away, he, let me make this stop, Larry. He's like, he like has the biggest fucking smirk. Like he's so proud of himself for asking that stupid fucking question. So anyway, um, his, that's struck down or whatever you call that. So then he has to reword it. And he's like, did you pack guns? Did you pack, um, a vest? Did you pack a knife? He lists a bunch of random things. Um, so then they ask her if she spoke to her mom on January 6th and she, again, this was in Colorado. She said she spoke to her mom when she woke up and, there's a time difference between Colorado and DC. Um, and she's, she doesn't get, she herself, Jennifer doesn't get up early. She, so she knows it wasn't very early. because She doesn't get up. Um, so she thinks it was about 10 AM her time that she spoke to her mom. So like by 10 AM, like, like elderly grannies, you know, about to getting ready thinking about knocking down barriers and shit. Um, cause it's actually noon, I think in DC. Okay which is when that Mayflower prayer thing was supposed to happen. Um, but he spoke to her mom briefly and her mom said that, Rebecca said that, um, if the doors are open, she'd like to go in and pray. So again, Rebecca did not go to the speech. She went straight to the Capitol. The speech was all the way at the end of the National Mall at the Ellipse. So, turns out that Rebecca lost her purse while she was insurrecting the Capitol. And so, somehow, someone reached out to... Um, Jennifer and let her know that via Facebook. Okay. So I guess she couldn't talk to her mom. I guess maybe her mom had lost her phone with her purse or whatever, but her mom went to the police station to inquire about her lost purse. Her purse that she lost while insurrecting the Capitol, she went to the police, asked them if they'd seen it. Um, so eventually the sister and like this person on Facebook, they get a hold of the mom or whatever and, um, retrieve the, this person on Facebook has the, has the purse. So they're able to, the sister is able to get them in touch and get the, and get the purse back to mom. Okay. So that was pretty much it for her. So the sister's done, curly hair girl. So she's been in the hallway this whole time for three days, right? Because she's a witness. She can't come in. So now that she's finished, tes finished testifying, she can stay. So she goes and plops down next to her redhead sister. And she's just like all over her, like hanging on her, touching her. Every time they talk, she's got her head on her shoulder. And it's just, it was like, it was like, guys, it was like sparky focused it was it was sparky but like 15 years 15 or so years younger than sparky 
like what Sparky is now, like 15 years ago, I think Sparky was like, you know, on the streets, but like, you know, if, if Sparky was 15 years, 20 years, I'm not really sure how old this lady is. Anyway, she plops down. So they're in front of me a couple rows ahead of me. So the next witness, there's so much here. Next witness is appearing via Zoom. Um, so this was Dave Summerall. So just to clear up a couple things first about Dave Summerall. So Dave Summerall is the stop hate guy and he hangs around Freedom Corner and Mickey a lot. Okay. But there's also, and he's, he's bald and tall. Um, and when I saw him in person, whatever, I can't remember what trial it wasn't that long ago. Um, he was very nicely dressed he had an expensive suit and he was with like really tall, beautiful women with like expensive clothes and, you know, expensive lip fillers and stuff. So that's Dave Summerall. Okay. So there's also another guy that people get Dave Summerall confused with. Okay. So his name is Tom and someone in here will help me with this last name because I forget. Tom also hangs out at Freedom Corner because Tom is from Northern Neck. So the, the other jail that's in Virginia, which where I used to work, Tom is a local there and like organizes that vigil shit. And I think the centennial, the centennial shit, it's like some local paper thing that they have. Sentinel, centennial, I always say it wrong. Sentinel, Northern Neck Sentinel, is that it? Um, anyway, that's Tom and him and Dave Summerall look similar, except Tom is hillbilly as fuck. Like when he comes down to the corners, he usually got a cowboy hat on. Um, and so he doesn't wear a cowboy hat in court and he's a little more put together. Um, not a lot, but that's Tom is hillbilly. Um, Dave Summerall is like the Ken doll. Okay. So anyway, I'm saying that because Tom has been around in court also this week. Okay. So there are people that thought Tom was Dave Summerall and was actually at court and it was not Dave, it was Tom. So when I was describing yesterday how Gary and Mickey and Tom were intimidating the local that was there um, observing court, I just want to be clear that that was Tom that was there in person. And today, appearing via Zoom, was Dave Summerall, okay? So, anyway, he's from Dallas, Texas, and he is a carpenter. And he started StopHate.com um, in 1992 after the L.A. riots. Okay, were you at J6? Yes. Um, he got there at 8 a.m., uh, he has, he films or whatever. He's has, he does footage things, documents things. Um, so he was there to do that. Right. So he got there at 8 AM and he couldn't get close enough to hear the speech and there was no service. So he couldn't hear it on his phone. Even though he got there at 8 a.m., couldn't get close enough to even hear. So they decided they were just going to go to the Capitol, and they were going to film people walking towards the Capitol. Did you know people were going to be walking towards the Capitol? Didn't Trump say, hey, let's march to the Capitol? Well, you guys ever seen those little freaking pamphlets, the maps floating around, the insurrectionist maps, it's all the permitted events, it's map, and it... Dave, that's Dave Summerall shit. And on there, it says at 1 p.m. that they're going to march to the Capitol. So I'm sure there's people, I mean, maybe I'm just like an idiot and I didn't know that people were aware of that prior. I mean, there were obviously people aware of that, but I didn't realize it was like on the pamphlet handed out to people that they were going to march at one o'clock. Jeffrey, oh, Tom Jeffries. He wears bandanas on his head at Freedom Corner. There we go. Not a cowboy hat. I knew it was something stupid on his head. A bandana. Okay. So Dave makes his way to the Capitol to film, right? To document. He was there to document history. That's what he said. Um, and then that's when the defense said, do you support Trump? And that's when the government objected and then it 
got a strike. So that means, you know, to take that out. Jerry can't have that. Um, so he was on the west side. So it's important because what's her face? Rebecca was on the east side. So Dave Summerall was on the west side with his film crew. Um, so the defense is trying to show some footage and they have just been fucking up footage left and right this whole week. They're so bad at this. So Titty Girl was not logged into the Zoom um, while they were trying to do this. So then she had to log in and blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, why were you not logged in when you're the presenter? Um, it's called, oh, the, the little pamphlet thing is called the MAGA Map Guide. So Dave Summerall doesn't even know Rebecca, never met her. Um, but he does know Michael Flynn, Alex Jones, Tamara Lee, Suzanne Monk. Um, he put on his little pamphlet that the doors open at seven and then that they were going to the Capitol at one. So they're asking him, what did you mean by the doors open at seven? And he was just like, you know, that everyone is getting there to voice their um, their free speech. So this is when he says he starts doing opinion stuff and not fact stuff. And he starts saying that because they asked him if he saw the police, because the whole point is Rebecca's trying to say, you know, she didn't see any police, she didn't see any bike racks, she didn't see any signs, she had no idea that she wasn't supposed to be there. But like I told you yesterday, she was right there as they were flipping, she was right behind people as they were knocking the gates down. Um, so anyway, did you see any police? And then he, Dave Summerall is like, well, the police evacuated, they left, and there was no one behind to answer questions. Um, so then the government objects. And then we take forever on the static thing. Um, and, um, Roger can, has, cannot ask any more. Well, no, not that Roger's only been told not to ask speculating questions, but, um, Dave Summerall cannot answer speculating questions. He just, you know, what he saw, you know, okay. There were no police there. Um, so then now the government's up. Okay. So they ask him about his stop hate and if it's an LLC, um, and it is, and they start talking about t-shirts and Summerall's like not gonna be, he's not gonna be a good witness for the government at all. Like, you know, you know, you know how these guys are. Um, so they ask him what kind of t-shirts does he sell? And he goes, the kind you wear. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's doing this via Zoom and i mean i really paid attention to what was in the background and right now we've gotten a little away from it even but so he's got what looks like a shower curtain over here in the side so i guess maybe he's got his bathroom door open behind him and then he's got like a stop hate flag directly behind him and then over here he's got the door open to another room so you can see in that room and like see his shoes and stuff and then like all around him is just like just random stuff. Um, and he's in a suit, but it also looks like a trailer. So he may have those fancy suits on and those hot bitches, but he spent all his money on that and not his home. I'm not really sure what's going on. So yeah, the kind you wear. So then they start talking about this. Can someone go look on his website and see about a shirt that has the Capitol on it? So they started asking him all these questions about the Capitol and he just didn't want to answer them um, correctly. And so the government was just like, okay, fine, we're done. And that was it. So what, what is that probably highly offensive Capitol t-shirt he sells? Okay. so. I'm going to smoke some weed and get a drink. Um, and I'm going to play um, this beef video again, since there's more of you here. Um, and then we'll be back to talk about the next witness. Okay, so let's take a fiver. Where's my mouse? There we go.
So smoke them if you got them, because I'm going to do that when I come back. But hydrate or dehydrate. Hi, Cutlets. I watched Matt's live stream when he was in Indianapolis on Tuesday, and I laughed so hard when he harassed the demonstrators that I almost peed myself. <laughs> Matt is hilarious. Plus, he is so, so cute. Jody doesn't beef break and know what a treasure she has. He goes out there all by himself against all those protesters while she stays home with her quote unquote bad back. The things he does for that woman. He has worked hard to support her and her shopping addiction for years. As a craft artist myself, let me tell you that those unpainted wood walls and peeling paint combined with early American stuffies and all that other fake colonial junk is not a good look. Oh my goodness. What is she thinking? Matt also took her side against their son when Jody was being a great big B and now he's estranged from his only son and sweet little grandson. It makes me so sad for Matt, but he's loyal. God bless him. I don't understand why. What does he get in return? A wife who spends her time mooning over Oreo. Oreo, who looks like a little gnome and has a really annoying voice. Not like Matt's. I could listen to Matt for hours, especially when he's being so witty with what he says about the protesters. <laughs> I'll never forget how he got on the bullhorn and dominated Ant at Bunker Hill. Oh my gosh, I wish I had a man like that. I said in chat that they should come to D.C. and join us at hashtag Freedom Corner, and I meant it. If Jody's back hurts too much for her to come, it's her loss. We all know that she would rather drink Josh wine and eat Oreo cookies than come out for freedom. Even at Bunker Hill, she was such a diva in her special tent. Stormy had to move a bunch of other tents just so she could have the spot she wanted. He's another man who isn't appreciated like he should be. Love you, Roger. But if Matt comes to D.C. by himself, we could talk. For one thing, I worked in the medical field. Well, I did clerical work, but I learned a lot. So many people use back pain as a scam to get workers' compensation. When I explain it to Matt, he'll see how Jody is pulling the wool over his eyes. Can't work because of her back, my ass. Pardon my French. Matt needs a woman who understands him. I know that when we spend some time together, he'll see that I have more to offer than she does, and I'm not like her, lusting after another man. I'm a good Christian woman these days, and I know Matt is a good Christian man. But I learned a few things back when I was young and wild, and I could show him a good time. <laughs> oh, Matt, just give beef a chance. That's all for now, Cutlets. Email me if you want to buy some macaroni jewelry. More humble hearts coming soon if I don't cut off my hand with my dad's tools. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Glory be to beef. Glory be to beef. Look, the Beef Diaries is here. Your new short tonight. Let's freaking go. Get your tea. She did have Josh line. <laughs> um, okay, so I keep seeing this about Mickey and Nicole. I don't know what this thing is. Luttenberg. I have no idea what the fuck that is. I'll be honest. To be honest, let me know. You don't see the shirt up there anymore. Gut fell. What the hell is that? On Fox. They're going to be on Fox. Maybe she's talk about me. My mom might actually see something. I've seen clips from it. Oh, that's great. That's winning for them. All right, let's try to get through this. I actually don't have much more. I don't have as much as I thought. Good. 
So, uh, are you guys familiar with Bobby Powell? Like I was saying yesterday, Bobby Powell is the one who tried to have me arrested. He tried to press charges because I blew a whistle and I got detained by the Capitol Police. He was with Ivan Raycliffe. So Bobby was witness. And he was supposed to be here yesterday. He had some travel issues. Um, so he finally got there today. And he currently lives is staying in Florida, but he's traveling the United States. So he's he's a van guy, basically. Um, he says he's a journalist. Defense asks him if he's current, like active, retired. He says he's a retired journalist. He got his degree in 1986 at Specs School of Broadcast Arts. Specs, as an S P E C S. Apparently, that's the name of the person who owns that broadcasting school or something. Um, he went on to like say that he was like so great and you know so many people watched him but we all know that is not the truth but um not coincidentally his show was called the truth is viral he was on the internet and the radio he was on 97.7 in sheboygan michigan um he outgrew the legacy media whatever the fuck that means um, so then he starts talking about January 6th and what time he got there. <laughs> and he says, zero dark 30. That's really early for non-military people. <laughs> Carry out. Um, so. He got to the mall about 5.30 in the morning. Um, he traveled with another journalist friend from Ohio. And also his fiance, or maybe he was implying that his fiance was his journalist friend, that the lines blurred for me for a bit there. So anyway, his fiance has knee problems. Um, so... When shit like started, everybody started running up the hill, which was like nooner or one o'clock or whatever. I forget. Um, <laughs> you've never seen anyone compensate as hard as Bobby Powell. Um, at the time, his fiance was having knee problems, right? And they were staying, he said, an apartment. So I'm assuming he meant an Airbnb. They were staying in an apartment on the northeast side of the capital. Um, so he was walking her that direction to take her back to, you know, tend to her and lay her down or whatever. Um, and that's when everyone like started running up the hill and, you know, he's a journalist. And so he found a DHS pickup truck, you know, that was parked, um, and, and he popped his wife up on the truck and he was like, honey, I've got to go to work. And she was like, baby. Go do your job. I'm dead fucking serious. And um, so he left his fiance in the back of a random DHS truck um, and he ran off to document. Okay. This, should, this is real life. Just in case you were wondering, as one does, that's right. So, all of a sudden, police were beating people up with batons. Objection. And so then Rogers got to redo his stupid fucking questions. Um, and he says under oath that he's a U.S. Marine. So just, just in case anyone ever figures out he actually isn't, he did say under oath that he is a U.S. Marine. Because it's questionable. Who among us hasn't left our wife on the back of a ranch? 
especially if you lived on the, right there in the Northeast, like, was it right there on the, like, where were you staying? You were literally staying, like, on the hill hill? Like, because a lot of people are, like, I'm in Capitol Hill, and it's, like, Eastern Market, okay? So, where was he going? If she was right there, you couldn't, like, accomplish a couple blocks? Anywho. Um, <laughs> then he says that when again when asked you know because they're trying to ask did you see police um so did you see police officers and he's like there were police officers standing around doing nothing and then again objection okay did you, it's did you see police officers yes or no okay so you know, staying around doing nothing. That's got struck, straight, stricken, whatever. Um, so they bring up a map of the capital area. Okay. And you know what? The, not everyone in the chuds want to say that it's, you know, they're allowed to be there. Okay. So here's the thing COVID, it was closed, but they were doing the vote. So when they have votes, and especially when they have the presidential, you know, with the vice president, presidential candidates, they had secret service detailed people there. Okay. It was like everybody, everybody was there. It's high security detail. Um, so when they do stuff like that, they close it off anyway. Okay. So there's there's a restricted area. Okay, and they pull up a map and they highlight around the border of the restricted area in red. All right. So there's not an actual red fence lining the Capitol. It's just you're using a touch screen and it's outlined. This is the red, the red zone. Like the public is not permitted past this zone. Okay. So I'm talking about that area and ha having Bobby describe where he was and and um He's like, actually, there were two permitted events inside the red line, which is not true. Okay. If I was better at this, we would pull the map up right now and I would show you that it's actually not true. There was no permitted events inside the red zone. Wrong. Um, so then we've got another objection from the government, which is, you know, um, sustain the right word, which means, you know, like that means. You lost again, Roger. So now the jury doesn't have that question either. Um, then Bobby says that his phone was stolen by the Capitol Police um, and that his FOIA request was refused. Um, and again, there's another objection. Okay. And Sustained is the right word, right? So nobody cares about your stone phone. That's not what we're here for. Did you see police? Yes or no? What did you see? Um, and then he says people were just chanting. And then we just like stop, just randomly stop. And the judge is like, okay, so we'll just be back tomorrow at 9 a.m. And he gives everyone their instruction when to be back. Um and then Bobby tries to be funny as he's being dismissed off the stand and just saying dumb shit. And he like tells the judge he likes his beard. Um, and so they excuse Bobby. And I am saying just like this. Okay. And when this focuses, so I sit in the corner, right? So I'm sitting on the corner in the very back row. But when you walk in the door into the courtroom, you go to your right or to your left, okay? And there's rows of, of pews. I don't know what the word is called, but little bench things. Um, so I'm right there next to the door, um, right there, closest. I'm sitting right, I'm using the wall, like leaning like this, okay? as Bobby is excused and he comes walking by me and looks at me and goes like this. He like covers his hand, covers his finger to flip me off. And so there was a marshal 
that was sitting all the way at the end of the same bench I was on against the other end of the wall. And I turned around and I was like, hey, just flip me off. So anyway, I'm probably gonna snitch on him about that, like officially. Just maybe if I get some caffeine in me tonight, we'll see. Um, focus, focus, focus. There we go. All right. So now Bobby's out. Um, jury's out. So now they're talking about the other witnesses that we still have to get through. So you, most of the time, um, at least well, from what I've seen, when you have a jury trial, so it takes Monday through Friday and you'll get like a verdict maybe Friday, but um, usually Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So anyway, Monday they select a jury, which takes the whole day. And by Friday, they're usually doing um closing statements and everything and the jury has gone out to deliberate okay even if they deliberate for the weekend or whatever um it's not looking like we're gonna get there hey metro zdc like that this week so they start talking about the witnesses that we still have to call and susan monk <laughs> is one of them and um for the record, the judge does not think she's going to be a credible witness. Like she has nothing to offer, and the government agrees. Um, so there's a good chance that Susan Monk won't end up being a witness, but if she does, it'll just be more waste of fucking time. Um Cusick, I think it's spelled C-U-S-I-C-K. He's a J6er. He's going to testify via Zoom. Um The judge and the government are concerned that's not relevant because something about he wasn't even on the right side or something. I don't remember. I didn't write that down. But um, And also those two Capitol Police. So we still have four more at least witnesses to get through. Um, the judge said that, you know, the jury's time is being wasted with irrelevant testimony. Um, and the government has subpoenaed the Capitol Police, so they're waiting to hear back about that. Um, and so that Cusick J6er that I just mentioned, that's when Grifting Johnny Pierce interjects. And um, because they had described this J6er as a rioter or something, he he breached. He was part of the breach, I think is what they how they labeled him. And so Johnny Pierce interjects and he was like, um, he didn't breach anything. The police let them in. They he went through open doors. Um, you know, the I think I said this, but they breached nothing. And so that was his client. So I find that funny that Johnny Pierce really thinks, or he's really gonna pretend that he thinks that the police let them in and they went through open doors. I mean, I know he just like is fucking around on his computer and his phone the whole time, but like you really haven't seen any of the footage. Like, shut up. So, um, Bobby Powell will have to finish his testimony tomorrow, also. So, he's first up in the morning at sharp 9 a.m. Everybody be there, be fucking square. Okay, don't stalk me. It wasn't an invitation to come stop me. Um, so Bobby Powell will testify. And then they're deciding if Suzanne Monkfish is going to testify. And then decide if that J6 is going to testify, which is via Zoom. And the government is like, it's really problematic, which it was when Dave Summerall did it via Zoom. It's, it's very difficult. Um, and yeah, so that was that. And I don't think anything happened on my way. Oh, yes, it did. So then I saw um, I saw the whole gang, uh, Roger and Titty Toilet Girl and Grifton Johnny and his little girlfriend and Rebecca Lavarenz and her three daughters. And that was everyone. 
Beta Bobby B. Silver. I'm surprised he's not at Freedom Corner right now. Is he on pre-trial? I honestly don't even know what his sitch is. You remember when he fell over drunk? He's such a beta Bobby, man. What kind of loser? I mean, like, first of all, flipping somebody off while court is in session is just stupid because you could get kicked out, okay, for that. Um, Casey, tiny. Um, but especially when you're a witness and you haven't finished your testimony yet. Yeah. That speaks volumes that you're not taking this seriously because I in no way provoked him or anything. I'm glad he recognized me. Fuck you, Beta Bobby. Living in his van down by the Potomac River. All right, that's what I got for you. I don't, not that I can recall anything. Else exciting happened. The moats. Is that a red robin? No, no, no. No, I hate Instagram. I don't have social media. When I started, I used to have freaking all of that shit. Um, and then when I started doing this stuff, like the psychopaths fucking came out. Um, so I just deleted all of that fucking shit. And I really don't like the internet and social media as it is. So I mo mo hashtags, mo problems. Um, and it figures isn't what I want it. Don't you think? Wow, thank you. That was very nice of you. Thank you. Is he a wife beater? No, wait. This is perfectly. Interesting. <clears throat> Thanks, Curtis. I don't know what time is it. Holy smokes, it's 8 o'clock already. I did not even eat today, so I'm definitely about to wrap this up. I just had an idea. I'm going to text you, BC. Oh my! It's like freaking perfect. Okay. Bye. Good night. Thanks for listening to me blab about court. You got to be a special kind of person to sit here and smoke weed and um, talk about criminals and all of this witness testimony and legal terminology. And um, you guys are great. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Bye.